Futures trading involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. Content provided in this segment is meant for educational purposes and is not a solicitation to buy or sell commodities. All right, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Tech Talk. Uh, getting towards the end of September here, Andy. Getting towards the end of September, and we are going to be looking at uh, some class three charts. I know you wanted to start mm -hmm. with the block weekly, roll yep. some class three, and I think finish it out with a uh, little bit of non fat and quarter four. Just a little bit of powder. We're rounding out Q3, we're heading into Q4. Um, awesome. So we'll start up. We'll start up with the weekly block. It seems to be, you know, uh, while the barrel has been kind of sitting tight here in the in the 160, this block market again took off. We didn't get to three bucks, but uh, we're, you know, hanging around here, we'd call it 256 to 260. Uh, reason I brought this up is, you know, we're seeing a futures market, and we'll take a look at it in a second, but we're seeing a futures market that's been pricing in a pretty significant discount to, to cash. And, you know, it's certainly pointing towards weakness in the cash market. And, and you know, I, I think it's easy to point at the block market to see a significant amount of that weakness if we are going to take cash to meet the futures market. And, you know, when I look at this block market, if we if we do, so this is a weekly, and let me just kind of blow this up a little bit. This is a weekly chart. And a couple things to take note of. A, we obviously have a pretty big gap here between 224 and call it 209. You know, we tried to, you know, we it, it, this is a price point too in this area where clearly we really took off from here, right? I mean, we got up to about 210. And within two weeks, you know, you, you basically accelerated through that gap. So this this price level right in here seems to be an area where the market just doesn't want to sit still, right? It wants to move through it. So what sticks out to me about this chart is, you know, basically, you know, we took a stab at, or really I should say last week, we were unable to substantiate the previous week's rally, right? So you had a pretty significant rally week to week here. Um, weren't able to close higher. In fact, you opened higher and then actually closed lower. And now, you know, you, you've got a kind of a modest open as of yesterday. Still plenty of days this week here. It's only Tuesday. We haven't had cash yet today. But, you know, this is starting to take shape as if, you know, if we get a, a close beneath this previous, this low here, so that we call it 254, if we get the weekly close below 254, you know, we're, we're, we're going to start to kind of be in a territory where you'll be clearly putting in a lower high from, you know, um, what we saw during the summer months. And then start to drift back down. If we do, I would I would expect that you know this this price this price area this gap here and what kind of almost was a gap, but you know this price level here is becoming a magnet. And then you know assuming we do, wouldn't be surprised if it was a quick trip back down there. Again, considering what we're seeing out of the futures market being so heavily discounted, but this is starting to take shape of being a, a, a lower high on a weekly basis from you know during the summer months. Would you consider this speaking of a quick trip back down there? Do you think it's kind of a rolling into an m formation yeah. on this chart for sure and you know that's that's you know that's that kind of the premise of a, of a of a lower high right where it's it's almost like the it well it is it's the opposite of a w you know i know we take a look we, we look at a lot of w's here on this channel but um it would be basically just the inverse of that right you just again assuming that we get a close beneath this low and then that's 254 that's a price you know call it you know you get a close like around 250 this week so by Friday, we're at 250 block. That would be a pretty weak close here. Um, and it would certainly substantiate the potential for a, a, a higher or lower high. So yeah, absolutely. This is starting to take shape like an M. So to be a true M, do we need to go back and test $3 range to round out the second, I guess the second M portion? I don't, I don't, think, I don't think so. I mean, in, in you think about, you know, again, you have this, this high that we came off from right mm -hmm. and let's say let's say this is going to be the high for this move you know an m doesn't necessarily have to test you know three dollars right in fact i i think you can make the argument that it's it's much more you know it's much more apt to break if it fails to even test that three dollar area that, okay. that that lower high right so assuming it, it assuming this plays out then you know you, you could easily just kind of take this back into this range you know not saying maybe we get back down to 160s but you know you, you certainly you know are painting the picture of you know maintaining that lower high especially if we get a close belief beneath last week's low okay so I, I would actually think it would be a little even more bearish for us to not test three dollars and for this to be you know, quote, kind of the high of this move. Okay. 
So, so I guess that's true that we're definitely going to have to look at uh, going forward and kind of rolling into a new quarter here in about what two days. Sure. Yeah. And and you think about what how the barrel market's been. You know, this is the barrel here lately. This has been obviously we had a substantial break here, but it's been relatively flat for the most part compared to the block, right? I mean, obviously a move from 144 to 168 is a big move, but compared to the block, it's 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 not as much. And so, uh, you know, if we are going to see weakness that takes us to where the futures are telling us we need to go, again, it, it, the the block market is, certain, is certainly starting to take shape with this M that's starting to, that's starting to shape up, this lower high um, as the driver of that. So, um, but like I said, plenty of time still this week. Still a lot to be said, um, but let's go ahead and switch. I mean, we've talked a little bit about it already, but this is the fourth quarter class three features pack. Not much going on here in terms of, you know, a whole lot taking shape. Um, you know, you had this W back here and it, and it certainly, you know, it, it, it took off and, you know, it took a stab at 19 bucks, couldn't get, couldn't get there. Re the reason I want to bring this chart up is it's been more or less trending upwards along this, along the support line here since it broke out from this from this W that I just pointed out back in you know late August. And you know, cash on a current cash basis is more like kind of right here, this $20.40, depending on where you have premiums and you know what kind of a weight number you want to use too. But you know, this this has been steadily moving along the support line here. Um, something's got to give, obviously, you know, right? I mean, we've got we're working on what week three of October. It's a five-week month. Yep. And you know, current cash is you know, day one of week three was higher. And you know, futures did actually settle lower yesterday, but I mean, we you know, day one of week three was higher in the cash market. So something's got to give here, and it's it's either cash or futures. Again, looking at the block chart, it certainly feels like a block can come down. But I think you know, the big thing for me out of this this Q4 is whether or not we break the support line, right? I mean, and this would be a pretty substantial break in the cash market to take cash down beneath it. But I think if we start to really weigh on the block, and you see you know multiple sellers and you know unfilled offers taking the taking the market down with no bids, I think this this support line is going to be the first thing that gets broken, and then the next big test is going to be this longer term support that we started back in like in uh, early April. Okay, looks like a seventeen dollar range, sixteen fifty is the next after the initial support there. Yep, yep. So this okay. will be the first you know the first one to go. I, I think if they're going to take the block down, you know pretty quickly and do it on you know unabated so to speak by from the buy side then I would ex I would suspect this this support line gets broken and the next one is seen here um, on that note this is a shout out somewhat of a shout out to Joe um, you know he's talked about this quite a bit this has been the the Oknov class 3 future spread um, you know, these feature spreads are becoming a lot more, you know, there, there's been a lot more volume and activity in these feature spreads and we're just seeing a lot more, I'd say pretty good technical, technical trade here. And it's a little tougher to be looking at these spreads as, as October has, you know, got a decent amount of it priced in, but again, October has been trading at such a big discount to cash. It certainly still feels like October can have plenty of price action between now and the end of its pricing. So I still feel like this, this chart has some validity to it. Um, what sticks out to me is that, you know, it, it took a stab here getting under even back in you know late august and then you know october went a dollar 50 premium to november that's what that number means right there this positive 150 and then we very close to getting back down to even i think this low is six october was trading six ticks or settled six points over november and since then we've managed to climb back up um i don't necessarily feel like we need to go back to a dollar 50 but kind of getting back to uh, the reason i want to bring this up is that you know the it found support here uh, kind of in this consolidation that it had back in August, if you just remove this this trade beneath the even, but it had this mm -hmm. consolidation here, found support again. And I think you could see a 50, you know, 50 ish percent retracement of the spread, which would take October, call it 80 to 90 cents premium to November. Um, how does it do that? Maybe it's just that cash sits here and October is naturally dragged up because of the because of the math, and then and November remains discount in anticipation of you know a weaker cheese market in the next two to three weeks. But when I look at this future spread, again, it's certainly looking like October can gain a little bit on November, and, and maybe that comes from cash sitting tight here for a little longer. Okay. So, um, last but certainly not least, I think that's our first uh, spread that we've ever had on Tech Talk this far. Right. There you go. First time for everything. First future spread that we've had. So I have to bring some more of those out. 
So this is a fourth quarter non-fat futures, and you know we've we've been talking about non-fat quite a bit on the, on the show here, and you know, for good reason. We're starting to see some pretty good price action, um, and you know what sticks out to me is that you know we broke through this 110 area. You, you took a couple stab, you took a stab here, you know, but we had a significantly higher low get put in and then take another stab at it. And since then, you know, we not only managed to break through this price, this 110 price level, but we've managed to maintain it and are seeing what feels like continued, you know, upside out of not only the cash market, but the futures market as well. To me, when I when I look at this chart, I, I just, it, it, the next stop seems like it's this it's this area of consolidation that we saw, or, or really it's more this area of resistance, right? And, you know, this 115 price level for Q4, turned into pretty aggressive heavy resistance here. I mean, you, you, the second trip went to 115, failed, and then we didn't see any real support until, you know, under a dollar. Um, so I think, you know, uh, the adage is, is that, you know, what was once resistance becomes support and vice versa. I think we're gonna see that here where we break through 115 and that becomes a new level of support. Um, and then, you know, from there, I think you just continue to trend higher. And we've, you know, to supplement that, we've looked at this chart again quite a bit, but to continue to bring it up, this this is this the weekly spot non-fat. This is the spot market here. Again, same kind of thing where you 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 put in a much higher low, broke through this this 103 104 area, and since then we really haven't been looking back too much. Um, you know, I, I I made this measurement here before, but this right here is basically this distance between when it when it found support, took off, and then found resistance. I just took that measurement from the breakout, and that's you know, taking us back into 125. 125. Yeah. And I, I think, I, I certainly feel like this is possible. The last, I believe the last GDT number that we saw had an equivalent of about a buck 30. Yep. Uh, we've got another auction on Tuesday, of, you know, this a week from today, but you know, this, the, the spot market and futures market, both are certainly taking shape to, to where we could see some pretty good, you know, I, I think upside from here. So I'm, I'm looking for a spot market north of 120 and futures to maintain a premium to that number. Okay. So that would take this futures pack, let's assume it does, and that would take that futures pack kind of back into this area, so. Okay, so back to pre-COVID uh, type type numbers. Mm-hmm, yeah, I think it's certainly, I think it's definitely in the cards here. Okay. Well, that's all I got for you, man. All right, and with that, that's gonna do it uh, for another episode of Tech Talk with Andy and Cody. Uh, again, if anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, Paige will put our contact information on here. And if anybody wants to see any charts that we haven't looked at in a while or any new ones that you have come up with, please let us know. We'll do a little bit of research um, and bring them up on the next episode. But if that is it, Andy, I appreciate you being with me here today and we will hit it again next week. Thanks for taking time, man. Appreciate it. All right. And if everybody would, uh, if you have not yet, hit the subscribe button and mm -hmm. punch that notification bell. So every time Andy and I do a video or Joe does a video on Wednesdays, it'll come up on uh, on your notifications and you can kind of look at what we're looking at, at every day. So with that said, everyone have a good one. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching RDTV. If you enjoyed that, be sure to subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave us a comment below or send us an email. You can also follow Rice Dairy on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. See you next week.